Hey guys, we are starting this week just outside of Sedona. This is a gorgeous place to be and it snowed yesterday. So all the mountains around here that are normally already gorgeous are covered in snow, which is just adding a new element of like, I can't believe that we're here right now. <laughs> so that being said, I think we are gonna drive away from here at least for the day and try and go explore Sedona because these mountains are really beautiful and I think it would be nice to get up a little bit closer and see some of them in person. And I love how we picked the day after it snows to actually go do the Sedona hikes. It's like the coldest day that we've experienced so far. It's, I think it's 9.30 a.m. and it just hit 32 degrees, which is pretty cold for us Southerners. We were hoping to leave at like six or seven this morning, but it was just way too cold. Like we could barely move. So we've just been hanging out. I had double coffee this morning <laughs> to get warm. <laughs> And uh, we've been hanging out just watching YouTube videos. This is a nice start to the morning, but yeah. we're real excited to get outside. We're ready to head out? I think so. We picked a very popular trail to try and get done today. And there are hundreds of people here. We're having a lot of trouble finding parking, but we kind of expected that to be the case. But we're determined, we're gonna make it happen. All righty. It's muddy. This parking situation is insane. There's so many cars here and there's an overflow lot that is completely full. We've already been walking for about quarter mile, almost half mile now, and we're not even at the trailhead. We're not even at the overflow parking for the trailhead. So I actually have no idea how far we have to go yet. One thing that I didn't know was on my bucket list that I'm gonna claim was before this is seeing a cactus with snow on it. I never thought I'd see that in my lifetime. I feel like we could do like an Instagram reality thing here where it's like Instagram, it's awesome view. Reality, super muddy. I'm just awestruck by the landscape out here because all the vegetation is really sparse. And you know, you can see like the red clay and it kind of looks like a desert, but mixed in between all of it, there's just piles of snow. And then not to mention obviously the red giant mountains that are like not too far away. This is crazy. I don't know, no one told us about this. I knew Sedona was nice, but I did not think it was gonna be this nice. And I feel like we're so lucky to be here with the snow. I don't know how often that happens, but like rarely enough to where I wasn't expecting any at all. This mud is absolutely killer. You can tell on the ground, you know, between the hundreds of footprints, there's like little slide marks where other people have slid and hopefully not fallen all the way, but I haven't seen any handprints yet. I guess that's what we should look out for. Or butt prints. Or butt prints. <laughs> I just feel like this is two scenes that you're not supposed to see, like a winter wonderland and then desert mountains. But maybe we just vastly underestimated what Sedona is like and maybe this is actually what it's like for half the year, <laughs> which would feel pretty dumb, but I like coming into something not fully knowing what to expect. So when we do see it, I, like, I am just taken aback. Like, it's insane. Like, we're just walking by what looks to be evergreens. I don't know what exactly what tree they are, but you know, they are green. They've got snow on them, and we're walking towards a brown and red and like tan mountain. 
This is crazy. And we're not even at the fun part yet. Wait, I read about those trees, Jimmy. Yeah, did you? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to be a know it all, but I'm really excited. <laughs> They're Arizona cypress trees. Oh, okay. So there are evergreens. Yeah, it says that it has bluish greenish foliage. That's cool. So I think that means it's evergreen. Wow. Good for you. That's why you bring me. <laughs> yep. Alright, I'm starting to despise the snow just a little bit more because this mud is making it 10 times more difficult to walk on this trail. It's only like a two mile trail and we've been walking for a long time. I feel more like I'm playing hopscotch than actually hiking. We're on a cracker break and we noticed a bird hopping around. My best bet is that he's trying to get some worms to come out of the ground by like making them think it's raining, like tapping on the ground. But it kind of looks like he's dancing. This isn't even the thing people come here to see. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's cool. Have we said where we are yet? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're at Devil's Bridge, which is a very popular, iconic hike in Sedona, Arizona. And we're here on a weekday and it's packed, which I think is pretty normal pretty much throughout the year. This is a very nice hike and I think it's worth it to brave the crowds to see the very cool bridge that's up there and you can even walk on it and it sounds like there's normally a line of people wanting to get their photo taken on it so it's a pretty big deal is this it or is it up there yeah. <laughs> Made it. <laughs> <laughs> that was tough. We're not even there yet. <laughs> I'm still wiping off my hands, but that's it. <laughs> well, the snow slowed us down, but it didn't stop us. We made it and... Looks pretty scary in person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a line of about 10 people before you can get your picture taken, so we're going to hop in that line and see if we can get a, a cool scenic photo. Happy We made it! Well, overall, that was probably the hardest trail we've ever done just because of the time of year. All the rocks in the last like half mile were coated in ice. And so people were scrambling up and down and, and when you got closer and closer to the Devil's Rock, it just made everything seem a lot more dangerous. But we made it, we got our pictures and we didn't fall off. Thankfully. <laughs> This is all ice. <laughs> 
There's like one of those that's real slippery, so be careful. Okay. Might be that one, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the slippery one. <laughs> All right, you're not free yet, so be careful. Okay, thank you. Have we mentioned how muddy it is yet? <laughs> if you're not slipping on the ice, you're slipping on the mud that the ice has caused. Luckily, I've got some brand new hiking boots that are really helping. Natalie is messing up her really nice trail runners, but she doesn't really have a choice. So I do feel bad for her. This is what they're for. This is not what they're, you're sinking in mud right now. It's better than uh, it's better than like smooth shoes. Yeah, it's much better than smooth shoes. I see some people coming out here with like Nikes and, and Toms. Oh, those are smooth shoes, right? We're not doing too bad compared to other people. We're now, walking about a, a third of the pace though. <laughs> I don't know, other people are going slow too. I have at least one rock in my shoe. Are you sure it's not mud? My shoes might not be perfect for this. The rest of my outfit is kind of perfect for today because I have the winter coat because it's snowing and I have my cactus shirt on. Kind of a perfect vibe, even though I feel like you're not really supposed to wear any of this stuff together. I spy something green right. and it's not Jimmy's hoodie. What the heck? Wow. Why is that just sitting there? That's crazy. Is it a cow? I guess so, yeah. Maybe it's a coyote. Oh, I don't think they're that big. <laughs> Not the ones you've seen. Uh-uh, <laughs> certainly true. Alrighty, well, we're back home. The bus didn't tip over while we were gone, which is a relief. That hike was gorgeous. There were a ton of people, but it was still so worth the crowds. And this was a weekday, so I think it gets even busier on weekends. But the overflow parking lot was totally full and we had to park like a mile away on the side of the road. And there are tons of people around us now that we've just gotten back. So it would have been better to leave early and start this hike really early in the day. But to us, it just it still wasn't worth it because it was so cold. And I don't know if it would have been safe to drive the bus on icy roads. So I think we're going to leave our parking spot, even though we do kind of have a nice view. We are pretty tilted, parked on the shoulder of the road, so even though it's like, it's almost four o'clock and we haven't had lunch yet, we don't really wanna eat lunch here because it's on such a slant. I don't think it would be very comfortable. So we are gonna drive somewhere. Before we set up camp for tonight, we have a couple of errands we wanna run. So first, Jimmy is going into the post office to send out some postcards, and I'm watching the bus while he does that so we don't have to cut the engine. After that, I think we're gonna get some gas, and then we might figure out where to park for tonight, which will probably just be the same BLM land we stayed on yesterday. made it back to the BLM land where we stayed last night and we got an even better spot tonight. Although it is five o'clock and I, at this point, I don't think that's a late lunch. I think we've just skipped lunch today. We haven't eaten lunch yet. Yeah. All we've had is two granola bars basically. And we've hiked uh, seven and a half miles according to my <laughs> Fitbit, so. <laughs> Do you know what the crazy thing is? Is that the hike for the Devil's Bridge Trail is actually supposed to only be 0.7 miles, but the road to get to that is completely closed off. So you had to walk from the overflow parking, but of course like uh, that one's gonna be packed. So we had to walk from the road, which ended up I guess being like close to four miles one way, even though the actual trail was only 0.7. It was totally worth it though, I'll be honest. I mind cooking just a little bit less than Jimmy minds it, which means I end up doing most of the cooking and I'm pretty tired after our big hike today. So I think we're gonna just phone it in a little bit and make hot dogs, but we're gonna try to make them gourmet hot dogs. We're gonna see how far can we go and make these really feel less like a cop out and more like a nice dinner. Oh yeah. 
another thing. So this is our Dometic refrigerator, which runs off of 12 volt power and is awesome for being off grid. We used to have this compartment as our fridge and the one closest to me was our freezer, but we were kind of having issues with our power. So we decided to try out having double refrigerators and that has made a world of difference. We are constantly topped off at like 100% battery power for our house batteries since we made the change. Whereas before, we were kind of losing like 10 percentage points throughout the day, even with the sun powering it. So, pro tip, <laughs> if you're having power issues, maybe try switching your freezer into a refrigerator. It helps a lot, for us anyway. And it allows us to have something that Jimmy and I have always liked to have but didn't expect to be able to do in a bus, which is double milks. So we can keep two full gallons of milk on hand at all times. We love it because we use milk all the time for cooking. Jimmy likes drinking chocolate milk and I like putting milk in my coffee. So it's really kind of a nice luxury and a great trade off for not having a freezer. All right, I'm done with, <laughs> I'm done with my side tangent. Back to hot dogs. Hot dogs look much fancier when you cut them. I just heard myself and that sounds ridiculous. Fancy hot dogs. See, he gets it. <laughs> oh, I get it. I understand. He's just glad he doesn't have to cook. All of our bus windows are fogging up with all this cooking. It's just because I'm working so hard over here. <laughs> I'm just creating tons of steam. <laughs> she doesn't believe me. Yeah, I don't think that's it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just playing solitaire over here. No! <laughs> we don't have any internet. Oh, that's true. <laughs> So I think I nailed it with dinner. I've got two gourmet hot dogs for each of us. On Jimmy's, we've got mozzarella cheese, ranch, and iceberg lettuce. And on mine, we've got everything that's on Jimmy's, plus red onions and pickles. And if you're from Chicago, I am so sorry. I also made Kraft macaroni and cheese and I forgot to make a vegetable and all the food's ready, so I think we're just gonna... You ready to eat, Jimmy? Which hot dogs are mine? So these are mine. Yeah, those are yours. So they've got lettuce and cheese mm -hmm. and ranch. Am yes. I missing anything, chef? Um... Nope, that's the perfect hot dog, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. They look great. Why? <laughs> Don't be so hard on yourself. These uh... are some gourmet looking hot dogs. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Matt. Oh my goodness, and we have some nice Kraft mac and cheese to pair with it. There's some uncooked noodles in the rim here. They're cooked. Oh, they're they are. Just, yeah. Okay. Oh, the uncooked ones are on the stove over here. The ones I spilled. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jimmy. Oh, thank you. Mm, I tried, <laughs> kinda. Mine's the smaller one. Thank you. Do the same for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> we'll switch after we turn it off. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. All right, well, I think we're gonna turn in for the night. Those hot dogs were real good and gourmet. <laughs> He's being nice. Lettuce on hot dogs is not bad. It actually wasn't bad. I was like pleasantly surprised and we might actually do that again. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching y'all. Until next week. Thank you.